the transformation that is happening in your life hallelujah because if 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 there's no change and transformation then we are just wasting our time on stage hallelujah we give god the glory holy spirit once again we submit to your authority we don't want to be talkatives on stage we want the word of life to come to your people father your people have left their workplaces they have left their homes their jobs their endeavors to come and sit under this prophetic and apostolic anointing lord they have come some with burdens some with a hunger to know you more some have come so that the keys of destiny be granted unto them who but you holy spirit is able to do this no man no man is able to do this no degree of intellect is able to unlock a man's destiny and lord i thank you because we recognize the presence of the holy spirit jesus left you with us to be a blessing the holy spirit we acknowledge you you are the boss we are only puppets reflecting that which you communicate to our spirits we are not ashamed to declare that we are inadequate without you lord i cannot help anybody if you do not help us tonight then there is no hope for us but lord we are confident in this that with you there is nothing we cannot do and so it is on grounds of that confidence and by the operation of your grace according to the measure of grace that you have granted that we will be able to minister your word and holy spirit i pray that you confirm your words with signs for you let the sick be healed let burdens be lifted let eyes be opened in the name of the lord jesus as i minister i declare that the angels of the lord will move around this place lifting chains and opening the eyes of men causing impartations to come to people by the anointing of the holy spirit let the word of god bring wisdom let every stony heart become a heart of flesh lord i pray that as i minister from the east gate let the river flow and let it cause everything that is dead to come alive save sinners by the convicting power of your, your presence and you will take the glory Holy Spirit, we thank you. Week after week, you show up in our midst, teaching us to be like Jesus, guiding us, helping us, instructing us in the ways of the Spirit, teaching us the principles that will make us signs and wonders. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. The secret behind this ministry your glorious presence the secret behind the words that we speak riding above our frailties and limitations to bless men and we thank you lord we thank you thank you for everyone in this ministry thank you for the ministers thank you for the leaders Thank you for the workers. Thank you for the members. We give you praise. Thank you because somebody's captivity will end today. Thank you because someone's eyes and the spirit will be open today. Thank you because someone will hear the sound of the spirit for the first time tonight. Thank you. Because the fire of the Holy Ghost will cause a separation between light and darkness. 
Jela Malala Mosia Nanana Masia Nanana Lena Maria Namoso Nanana Nanana Namos Lea Mara Moso Nanana This is the secret of God's presence Always learn to soak in His glory The glory of God carries power in itself I create the climate for the Holy Ghost to find expression. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I saw. I saw because I was in the spirit. I saw because I was in the spirit. Bible says, walk then in the spirit. Just five minutes. Let's breathe the air of heaven. Bible says do not be drunk with wine wear it in excess he said but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost speaking to yourselves in Psalms in hymns and in spiritual songs making melody in your heart to the Lord Lord we make melody to the Spirit but the carnal mind understandeth not the things of the spirit because they are spiritually different. Sir. Hallelujah. John 14. Something is happening to your spirit week after week. Something is happening to your mind. See, the word of God is making you in to become something. The word of God is making you to become something. You can't undo it. You have gone too far. I'm telling you, even if you try, there are some of you that cannot backslide again. You can't. The programming has gone too deep. It's like occult. It's like initiation. There is a level you get to that your soul has been sold. That's how it is. You can get into God such that you turn back and will not find the bridge to go back again. This is what God is doing to you. Hallelujah. John 14. Hallelujah. While I prepared for this meeting yesterday, I was sleeping and the Holy Ghost woke me and he told me that one of the things that will be happening tonight is that there will be accelerated visions and insight into the spirit. Hallelujah. Please, I want you to believe it. And so, regardless, for some of you, what you will hear tonight is not the message. You will be lost in encounters. You will just get the tape later on and find out what really happened. I don't know why, but this is the message of the Lord. And so, Lord, we let you do the things that you will do. Hallelujah. Encounters of the Spirit. When your eyes are open and you see things in the Spirit, there is a level of conviction that you have that no one can take it away from you. Hallelujah. I, John, was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and I saw. Tonight you will see, Lord, 
I pray the prayer that Elisha prayed for his servant that his eyes will be opened and that he will see chariots that someone here tonight will know that they who are for us are greater than they who are against us in the name of the Lord Jesus please be seated God bless you John 14 now arise O God come to your resting place Solomon prayed this prayer he said you and the ark of your mind let your people know that you are in the midst 21 he that hath my commands and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him Judah saith unto him verse 22 not is carried Lord how is it that thou would manifest yourself unto us and not to the world Jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him hallelujah tonight I'm teaching on obedience a more excellent way you need to listen to what I have to share tonight obedience colon a more excellent way vision of someone in this place what is this that I see I'm seeing ropes around your house I believe this represents captivity and bondage there's been so much stagnation and pain in your family But then I'm seeing an angel of the Lord walking with his sword. And it will be a sign. The Lord will touch you where you are as a sign that he's visiting your family. Lord, I pray that your fire power will come upon such a one as a symbol of the things that you are doing in the spirit and the Lord tells me to be confirmed by a loud noise a loud noise to give you glory thou devil of darkness let God's people go Please bring that lady, the one at the back. God made many lights. In the name that is above all names beginning from you and the oppression that comes upon you
I set you free right now in the name of Jesus. There are two more people. Two more people in this same condition. The Lord will bring you out by himself. For he's the Holy Ghost. Lord, go ahead and I pray that these two people, two people, there are two ladies. Not when the Holy Ghost is in the house, for there is a light that shines brighter than any dark. Bring the lady. There's one more person. Three. Kapa toka pariata. Pan paka paske pati kapa. Brando kapate kapaya. Thou devil of darkness, let her go, for you will not hide in the light of God's presence. This is a place of emancipation. But no darkness is able to stand in the presence of His name. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. That's what you receive when the Holy Ghost. So let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles. time now you're prophesying to yourself so let go hallelujah at the seventh count God will set three of you free and the Lord says the whole congregation to shout it because he wants to teach you how to walk in the anointing so go ahead and let's count seven. One, together. Just watch what is happening. No. Thou devil of darkness, for you will not stand. Let the oppression over God's people go. Let them go. The chains of darkness. Come out of her right now. Come out of her right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Come out of her. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. command that demon that has tied you and your family let her go now for we are upon Mount Zion where there is deliverance hallelujah I want to use come my dear I want to teach you something about the anointing come you will minister to this lady you believe you are anointed you have the power of the Holy Ghost. Go and lay your hands on her. Everybody watch what happens. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Speak. Go ahead and speak. I decree freedom. I decree you free. And these signs shall follow anyone. Anyone that believes. Anyone that believes. Freedom. Now. 
for your family. Listen to me. Listen. You're sitting under a kind of anointing week after week, month after month. For some of you, you are not even noticing the transformation that is happening. A day will come. I tell you, you will walk. You will not know the degree of light you carry. You may not even... This is not about ministry. This is light. For when the light of God comes upon you, you will step into darkness. And you will command doors that are closed to be opened. And you will command doors that are open to be closed. There is an agency of the Holy Ghost. As you listen, there is a programming. Unbelief is dying in your mind. Faith is rising. The audacity of the Spirit is working in you. You may not know because you are not the ones preaching. You are just sitting. You are jotting. You are writing. But then you will begin to see because it won't take long before fruits will begin to be born. Prophesy one more time. Let hope rise. trembles in your in your whole life. Darkness trembles in your Hallelujah. Call that little girl for me. Come. Come. Listen to me. There are three people God wants to touch. Sweetheart, you're going to declare that in the name of Jesus, all right, let the Holy Spirit touch those who he wants to touch. See, there are three people. The power of God will touch us. This girl prays. It's not about her. I'm teaching you something. Father, I pray. Just go ahead and say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray the demon is going to come out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are going to cover us in the blood of Jesus. Father, I need demons. Father, I need them to stand here against us. Father, you are going to us. We are going to bang it out in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are going to bow our Father. Father, I pray thank you for more. Father, I pray you forgive us our sins in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I know where we are sins against you. Father, you are going to forgive us right here in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I need you to sister us. Father, I pray you are going to come in and bang it out in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are going to cover us in the blood of Jesus. Father, you are going to heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you realize the Lord just changed our message this night? And this signs. The Bible says handkerchief. Handkerchief. Watch this. Everybody watch this. Please look at this. Everybody watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Just watch this. What is in a handkerchief? What is in a handkerchief? Bring that other lady. Bring this other lady. A handkerchief. No faith. What is in a handkerchief? Please bring the last lady. Look 
God. What is in a handkerchief? What did the demons see? What happened to them in the realm of the spirit? This was a handkerchief that the protocol brought. It was not even my own. If a handkerchief can be a conductor of glory, of grace, and of power, somebody help me with your veil. Somebody who does not know me, help me with your veil. Who is a which department? Welfare. Anybody in welfare? Welfare. Come. You believe you are anointed? Welfare. Go and lay this material. You don't, we didn't negotiate this. Go and lay it on this lady. She's not even seeing you. Just go and lay it on her. What happened? Now, listen, listen. She did not even see her. What, what is happening in the spirit? This is what you must learn. Because the days that are coming will require that we have an accurate understanding of the operation of the spirit. This is what the Holy Ghost is making you become. This is what he's making you become. A sign and a wonder. Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Hallelujah. So let's follow what the Holy Ghost wants to do tonight. Mark. talk on obedience another time please sit down mark 16 as you rise up from this place you are free you will receive amazing testimonies from your families Verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach, declare, proclaim the gospel unto every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs. That becomes our new message tonight. These signs shall follow them. Who believe. In my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. This is a school and the Holy Ghost is training us. We are supposed to become something by reason. You sat here last week. Come. Two of your names are Hausa names. Is that correct? I may be wrong. I don't know whether it's. Eh? Okay. You sat down close to Emanuela last week because I'm seeing face a Facebook picture.
of what the media has snapped right now and i'm seeing you sitting close to ella last week please come and stand here god wants to do something in your life hallelujah you believe that you are standing on holy ground i'm seeing a river coming out right now the lord will ignite you and begin a prophetic work in your life so lord let it be according to your word breathe upon her set her on fire by the power that is in the name of jesus i pray right now that the lord will anoint you in a fresh way that you will cause your eyes to be open again and again and again and again for you will step into a new realm and a new experience of the spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ listen to me the christian listen christianity without the anointing of the holy ghost without the power of the holy ghost is a dead religion are you listening to me paul said when i came to you i did not come to you in the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power that your faith will not sit upon the wisdom of men but upon the power of god satan has vowed that he will not let you walk into your destiny that he will not walk, let you walk into the place of the anointing and so when you get born again please listen the holy ghost comes into your life the holy ghost does not bring eternal life he is eternal life are you listening to me and then you begin a walk with the spirit he begins to renew your mind what is the renewal of the mind bringing your your will your emotions your intellect into conformity conformity so that they are not at variance with the patterns of the spirit are you following me now and as you begin to comply you see it's one thing to be born again but you can choose whether or not you will continue the journey are you listening to me there are several believers who have stopped at the gates of salvation in the old testament the tabernacle was made of three subdivisions the first was called the outer court hallelujah the outer court you met certain things when you entered you will meet the brazen altar hallelujah and then you will meet the lever for washing your hands it's a sign of the 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 redemptive work of jesus christ but you can choose to stand outside you didn't need to be pure or clean to come in you just needed to come in are you listening to me but then there was the inner court and when you enter the inner court the rules change are you listening to me because as soon as you enter the inner court then you will find seven candlesticks which represent the perfect ministry of the holy ghost according to isaiah 11 the spirit of the lord the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord hallelujah and then you have the table of shoe bread that represents the manifestation of the word of god hallelujah then when you step in into the most holy place in that place there was no light the literal shekinah of the lord was the light in that place and that one was not free you had to be qualified to step in listen there is a level of your walk with god that the things you receive from god are just a gift but there are certain 
having contentions of rest in the spirit that is a reward the bible says come unto me all ye that are weary and are heavy laden and i will give you rest hallelujah but then in the book of hebrews the bible begins to speak that there remained another rest for the people of god he said let us therefore labor to enter that rest that one is not free the manifestation of god's grace switches from being favor into enabling grace the ability to stand until you enter are you learning something tonight holy spirit please let us see i really wanted to teach on something lord would you allow us just to all right let's see how we'll connect it john chapter one i don't want to keep us long here wherever we stop john chapter one Please change the message again. The living logos. That's a new message for this night. John 1 verse 1. Hallelujah. Let's read together. John 1 verse 1. 1 to read. In the beginning was the word and the bible says and the word was with god and that word was god praise god i'm going to be showing you tonight that the word of god is the secret of walking in grace and glory the word of god is the secret but it's not what many people have been taught to be word 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 because that thing they call word i will show you from tonight's teaching that is just religious nonsense that has no ability to transform people are you listening to me now the greek word that was translated word there please write bible studies is logos l-o-g-o-s logos We're going to be examining what is the word of God. Because I know many of you are confused right now by what happened here. The Bible says he casted out the devils with what? His word. But then a handkerchief that does not speak comes upon someone. So did, did the demon hear a voice in the spirit? Did the demon see Jesus? Did the demon enter heaven? Did he see fire? What happened? That handkerchiefs and aprons were brought out from the bodies of the apostles. The living Logos. Hallelujah. Now Logos talks about two things. Let me visit my notes now. Number one. Logos means a thought or a concept. Please write. That's the first definition. A thought. You think about something. A thought or a concept. And the second definition is the expression or the utterance verbalizing that thought the expression so logos talks about a thought something that is in your mind you are thinking about it your ideology and then it also refers on the other hand to 
an expression of that ideology so that it finds expression please follow me hallelujah so the bible says in the beginning was the logos and that thought that concept that ideology that mindset was locked up in the heart of god and according to scripture as a man thinks in his heart so he is and so the bible says that thought was as good as god in other words when you begin to interact with that thought it makes you become like the person um how do i express it? if you have a way of reading and knowing my thoughts then you can behave like me so well that people will think i'm the one are you listening to me so when the bible says i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 verse 11 that means as god sits down there is a mindset that he has there is a way he's thinking are you listening to me now and holy men listen to me inspired by the holy ghost who is the only one who has the ability to search the mind of god wrote down these thoughts or the concept it means the principles and the mindset please follow me the word of god is not just genesis exodus leviticus number i know i'm going to shake a little religion here now let it go praise god when we talk about the word of god the logos of god we're not just talking about um we're not just talking about uh a book that contains information about god we're talking about the mindset the principles of god are you listening to me and so when you begin to study the bible what you first encounter is a particular mindset there is a way god responded there is a way he dealt with people there is a way he manifested are you listening to me and as you begin to interact with his thoughts an impartation comes upon you so that you now begin to frame your mind according to the mind of god at that point you do not just have the word you are becoming the word are you listening to me because the bible tells me that the lord is alert and active jeremiah 1 12 watching over his word to perform it but then the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word i needed to get this this is a big secret just follow me so the logos of god refers to his thoughts his mindset his ideologies his ways of doing things the way god reasons his ultimate purpose is to bring many sons into glory and so to do that he begins to train you to think like him hallelujah when you go to shika even if everybody in shika wears short nika you'll be able to know who is a doctor because there is a mindset are you listening to me if someone collapses here all we know is prayer we're getting into prayer straight but the doctor has he has been given a mindset are you listening to me the medical practice has a mindset now when the doctor comes into that system what happens certain lecturers begin to give that student a mindset are you listening to me the first thing is they let the student know that you should respect cadavers because they'll give you opportunity to learn and then while you are running away from dead bodies the doctor knows that this is his friend for the remaining six years are you following me now i'm not a medical student so whatever i say just accept it don't take the message to your classroom take it for your spiritual life 
are you listening to me that's a mindset so someone who used to be afraid of blood and dead bodies come to a point where it becomes a normal thing if we bring a dead body here many of you will wait outside and say i will pray from there so that whatever happens i can easily say i was not there hallelujah and then they teach them how to hold a syringe as tiny as a syringe is doctors can come to a point where you see somebody's hand who is twice as big as me he will hold a little syringe and and he will enjoy you with it i mean he just puts it he knows where he will find and he won't kill you with it if you give me a syringe now to give you an injection i will tell you let's do it during miracle service but the doctor listen please are you following me now so he's reading it from his textbook but it's becoming part of him are you getting me the goal is not for him to be a good crammer the goal is that one day he will become an expression of that textbook are you following me please the living logos so god's ultimate goal is not that one day you are able to recite scripture but that the word of god that you are interacting with you become the manifestation of it are you following me now so the word of god is god and any other thing that can have the thoughts of god mm. are you listening to me the mindset the principles of god so you begin to study from scripture that every time god wants to bless a man god demands a sacrifice from that man and so you, you look and you say wow and then god you want to change the story of my family so god says all right i'm demanding a seed from you or i'm demanding being an act of sacrifice because you have interacted with the word of god your spirit will not resist his dealings are you listening to me and you can step in and act and then you are you get the results so the first revelation of god's word i need you to get this because a lot of people pride themselves now it's good for us to be good bible students a lady sent me a text that she wanted to recite some verses when i saw the number of verses i said can i recite this myself i said that's interesting so we'll give her an opportunity to do that next week it's wonderful charles finis dix knew the bible from genesis to revelations of heart yeah of heart praise god but he never held the kind of Benny Hinn crusade. Now that's not to mock him. His text Bible has blessed us. But I'm telling you that it must translate beyond this. This is why you stand and look at a demon possessed person. And your memory just goes to a scripture. And you look and say, in the name of Jesus. So if, the, if it was written in your language, you probably speak your language. And now what the demon what moves the demon is not i n t h e are you listening to me now n a m e j e s u s no because there are people who don't pronounce jesus in english and demons still go out correct we need to understand this because see when the apostles walked i hope you know that there was no bible as we know like this there were only the scrolls the law and the prophet and it was not given for public consumption it was kept in the temple luke chapter 4 the bible says when jesus came to read for to read it was given to him i follow me now and after he read it he returned it back you don't have it this way so i have a question what did the apostles call their word of god because what we read today that we call the word of god was their experience that has been recorded so in their days when they said the word of god is quick and powerful what were they saying because they didn't quote scriptures as fluent as we they only had the old testament 
the only time they quoted scripture was when they were explaining truths either to the jerusalem council or, and there was no reference of quoting scripture near i may be wrong any demon possessed man but we polish our english and speak niv and we move to new living translation i adjure you by the ability of him who is seated go out and the demon looks at you what are you saying the word of god is not the grammar of god are you listening to me the word of god is not the eloquence of god it's not the oratory of god it's the thought the mindset of god so listen to me the mind of god concerning pastor alpha is that pastor alpha walks in the full knowledge of the lord and the blessing of god and if any demon comes and is impeding that movement what happens i know the mind of god concerning this person and so i'm not just speaking verses i am enforcing the mind of god the bible says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god all right to the pulling down of strongholds casting down every imagination and bringing every high thing that exalts itself above what was the scripture i can't remember what I, where am i genesis the weapons of our warfare are not i quote scriptures from my spirit i told you this already some of you don't know where it is somebody said james i just go i said tell god read your bible for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the what pulling down of strongholds then he said casting down every yet imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of christ he said bringing every other thought every other word every other pronouncement that means satan has his words too he has his thoughts he has his version of the logos are you listening to me and so he tries to bring it above christ so when you stand with god's word one of the ministry of that word is you suppress the mindset and the expectation of satan over some are you getting me please he says if logos is thoughts that means it's the thoughts of a man satan has his own thoughts man himself has his own thoughts is that correct that's why the bible says there are many voices so when you come to the point where philippians 2 verse 5 becomes a reality it says let this mind in other words there are many minds there are many kinds of permit me to use the word logosis but he said let this mind there are many books that have been written many people read different books are you listening almost every religion has a book that is their logos are you following me now once you read the book it gives you the mindset of the person who the book is about is that correct when we're in secondary school there's this physics text we call piano kk if you didn't cheat during your ssc let me see if you read that book hallelujah even if you cheated your yeah, god has forgiven you <laughs> see the number of people that said amen <laughs> hallelujah now listen there are certain students who read that book so much that if you are giving them a definition they'll tell you the page number have you seen people like that they say abba i know it there is even another one check the summary there is one statement you missed and then this is listen listen don't just get excited for nothing i'm communicating something to you they are interacting with the thought of that professor correct to the degree to which they sufficiently stayed here they will begin to use his kind of mindset to analyze have you seen people that analyze things like that
my physics teacher in secondary school was a very interesting man he was so into physics to the point that when the assembly is going on and we have a test once it's seven o'clock he just leaves us and enters the lab he writes his question sits down in the class and says start and he's excited to the point that he will use this wisdom bridge and try to play guitar and just be dancing there's nobody writing the test will come late once it's exactly time you say submit your papers even if there's nobody in the class the last person who that's how he believed and he was come i don't know what he read so god has a thought a mindset all right holy men listen to me holy men decided to write this by the inspiration of the holy spirit so god's ultimate desire for you is not to be able to quote galatians galatians what 220 but for you to become an expression of it you get me because if you can quote it and you are not an expression of it then there are many unbelievers who attended mission schools and attended and did bible quiz there are many people who have demons inside them and they were part of the delegates that were sent to represent states in Bible club. They quoted the scripture that would have brought the, de the devil out and they got award. Are you listening to me? So the logos is not just the, the grammar. But understanding that there is a mindset that you are supposed to get. Are you listening to me now? So let this mind be in you. Permit yourself to come into oneness and conformity. God has a mindset. There is a way he's thinking. When God looks at a sick person, there is a way he thinks. When God looks like at an oppressed family, there is a way he thinks. Are you following me now? When you begin to interact with the world, when you look at a sick person, you will think just the way he would have thought. So he can freely respond through you the way he would have responded if you were there the degree to which you come into that alignment is the degree to which we say you have the mind of christ please are you listening to me put that as equation one let's go to the next subject of discussion the utterance this is the one that is very important the utterance logos as the expression watch this um, if i have the picture of a particular cloth you can't know it it's only me that has it is that correct but if i tell you bring me a biro bring me a paper and i draw what happens i have given that thought expression is that correct or if i look at you and I say I want to eat pounded yam. What happens? I've given my thought an expression. If you are eating pounded yam and I want to, I want to eat. I can nurse it as a thought, and I can swallow one cup of saliva and be looking at you and wishing that my thought will find expression. Correct? If by any reason I summon courage and I say, please, before you finish this food. Is there any possibility of joining you what have i done i have given my thought expression whether by speaking by drawing by molding artists give their thoughts expression do we have people in the department of arts here please nobody ah. hallelujah are you listening to me and so someone sits down and begins to have a thought in his heart he wants to write a song and he begins to utter it oh, 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 oh then he writes it then later on there is a way he wants to put it then another inspiration comes heaven heaven on earth what is happening his thoughts are coming alive because he's giving it expression the beauty of any thought is that it be made known are you following me now please so 
when he finishes everything and he sits down he finds satisfaction and then he worships things starts uh, worship team starts singing oh, 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 oh heaven heaven on earth oh, oh, oh now the person's thought is that i will write a song that reflects heaven are you listening to me so that when the listeners get to hear the song they will see a combination of skill and they will know god more this is his thoughts correct now he began to find ways of giving that thought expression and he decided to use music as the vehicle to express that thought are you listening to me now so the satisfaction of the writer of this song is that when you are singing it the effect he predicted that should happen to you is happening are you listening to me the moment you are singing i say something's moving something's changing sees glory feels like heaven on earth the moment you see people getting up and they are really moving i mean things are changing you see people dancing the person who wrote that says see my thoughts in action they have become my thoughts in action it first started from me but it has translated and entered them lord help us this night is somebody getting this you can get the tape and listen again but i'm showing you a very powerful revelation so the goal of god is not that you look at him and say oh michael stampley great job you will forever give him the credit all right but the worship team can learn this song and go and sing it in ibadan exactly oh, 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 oh even with his voice heaven it has now become their thoughts are you listening oh, oh, oh are you following me now please heaven and in ibadan they see people jump the same way something's moving something's changing are you seeing now it started from the thoughts of a man he found a way to give that thought expression why so that people can see what he's thinking please are you are you listening to me now they interact with that thought so much that it now becomes their own thought and they run with it and reproduce the result that he desires if you are confused then you are following me properly I'm joking it's not our job to confuse you hallelujah so the bible says listen in the beginning was the word wherever that is the realm of the spirit we cannot relate to that statement correct and the word was with god and that word was god and then the bible says, he ah a thought he was with god in the beginning and what happened the bible says the logos of god through the agents of the holy ghost the holy ghost turned his thoughts into a cell and planted that thoughts to grow in a woman to the end that a figure he he would have used a donkey he would have used music are you listening to me but he chose to use a man why because his utmost desire was to redeem men are you listening to me so jesus appears as what the bible says the word what was in the heart of god now became flesh and then it dwelt it was manifest when everybody prior to that time except a few people nobody could predict how god will respond in a particular situation but then jesus comes into the scene the bible says full of grace and truth so god thinks grace and truth that's what is in his heart are you following me now jesus walks to the sick person something's moving something's changing sees glory watch this now he's standing and he says the son of man has authority to forgive sins this was all the thoughts of god how can i forgive and he says jesus express what i am thinking and jesus says this is what my father is thinking right now and the father said you are accurate indeed you are a manifestation of my thoughts are you listening to me so 
while Jesus was walking the Holy Ghost keeps searching the mind of God and keeps revealing to Jesus are you listening to me he trained the mindset of Jesus Christ so that when he came and there was no fish the father will be thinking in his heart all right tell them to cast their net and Jesus gave it expression he said now cast your net why I am the locus of the father the living logos so Jesus walked in such alignment to the father when he got to Bethesda he saw a man he said for how long have you been here and the man said 38 years and then the Holy Ghost started moving and the father said I want to use that man as an example so tell him to rise up and take up his bed and then the logos finds expression accurately accurately and then when Jesus was at Gethsemane listen to me for the first time Jesus was tempted to disalign and not become the logos in reality he said father I have done ev I have expressed your thought with so, so much accuracy but as a man right now there is so much pain is there any possibility of you just keep thinking what you are thinking but uh, can you not follow another route but he remembered I'm logos nevertheless not my will but your will be done are you listening to me the expression so the word of God gives the mind so if I take a handkerchief please listen if I take a handkerchief and I lay my hands upon it and I drop it upon something I permitted this handkerchief based on the authority I have over it as a man are you listening to me to align with what the father would want to do and so the same way demons would have rest whether it's my hand my leg my shoe my handkerchief the exact same way the word of god the apostles will say is the word that casted out that devil are you listening to me and so jesus is about to go and he says i will not leave you comfortless hold on something is about to come the same holy ghost that made jesus logos living active now comes upon the believer and says trust me i can make you like jesus just trust me then he begins to lead you through experiences are you seeing the harmony of the written principles of God and the word? The Holy Ghost does not come to contradict the word. He comes to give it expression in your life. I have found my servant David and I have anointed him. And the Holy Ghost will say, I did that to David. Let me do it to you. And he says, lead me to the path. And he begins to lead you the same way he led Jesus Christ. Then one day, he will now tell you, tell that guy on the wheelchair stand up you say me say you are already becoming the manifestation of the word come something's moving something's changing sees the living logos that's why we say god suddenly this guy is shocked and say me are you are you following me now he's becoming he's not just full of the word he's becoming a manifestation of that logos so you become a true kingdom citizen to the degree to which you are able to align with the mind of Christ. This is why the Holy Ghost is priceless. Are you listening to me? Because there are certain details you may not find exactly in the Bible. So you are lost as to what God would want you to do. Then the Holy Ghost tells you, I can continue that ministry. For instance, there is nowhere that is written that he and I in the Bible should have 21 days prayer and fasting so the holy ghost searches the mind of god and says at this point this is what god wants 
and the degree to which you are be, you are cooperating with the word you say let it be on earth as it is you see the prayer of jesus he said when you pray tell the father that let it be done in the earth exactly as it's in the heavens so when you become a christian you don't just get any job the way you want it's not just the salary you go back you see where prayer becomes serious because we pray not just to receive breakthrough we pray first and foremost because we want to walk in the accurate thought of god for that moment so you are praying and then a job comes 150,000. but then you search and god says uh -uh, that's a nice job but it's not consistent with what i'm doing and you tell them well this is a nice job but i'm working with the world are you listening to me so when you say the word works change it from w-o-r-k eh, to w-a-l-k the word works the word works that's why there is a performance it can follow us from our room and come to koinonia and perform wonders it can follow us to mina perform wonders follow us everywhere perform wonders Are you listening to me now the holy ghost does not come into your life to tell you choose the bible or choose me this is what i want to balance are you listening to me because there are many believers who believe that all there is is walking with the holy ghost and they throw away the bible have you seen people like that you don't read the bible you don't do anything when you are hearing the holy ghost talking to you and when you are reading the principles of god's word it's exactly the same thing you see that because both jesus and the holy ghost are helping you confirm to the father's intent so whether the word be written whether the word be spoken the most important thing is that that logos finds expression are you listening to me so for you you may not hear the holy ghost saying leave that job but a scripture can come into your spirit and then you open the bible and see that david departed from so 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 place and for you that becomes a revelation of the thoughts of god for you are you listening to me so when you say the ministry of the word and the spirit many of you just think okay the ministry of the bible which on its own can bless me then the holy ghost different can bless me no there is a harmonious walking the holy ghost comes to amplify the word to the end that day together written and spoken will guide you to be a manifestation of the thoughts of christ are you listening to me if god or if jesus christ is the logos and the bible says as he is so are we that means god's goal is that we also become a manifestation of that logos this is the secret of walking in power so not only have you crammed scripture you are conscious of the fact that the father is always thinking what is he doing so on friday what is god thinking for koinonia a miracle service so in the place of prayer while i'm praying i'm allowing the holy ghost to scan to and god will tell me i'll be focusing on healing cancer i'll be focusing on healing hiv are you getting that now that's the reason why you can tell a demon go is there a scripture like that not necessarily aside from, i'm not there is no chapter of the bible called go but the demon will leave because the thoughts of god for that man came to bear so if a handkerchief can accomplish that the result will be the same you get my point god needed to stop balaam hear me from going to go and cause the nation of israel what happened every human agent there was not in alignment and god said i have to move through a donkey logos suddenly the donkey spoke to the prophet come question so is there a possibility that if men will not praise him 
he will use another medium he will raise up stones you get me now he said look there are many mediums i can use to express my thoughts and if you men are not ready to praise me it is within my power to raise up stones and create a capacity in them to respond to my thoughts something's moving see his glory listen to me god had a thought about the way the sun will rise and set and what happened he used his word to speak his thought and from that day till today the galaxy has been obeying his word now satan enters the cosmos and is trying to change the thoughts of god into his thoughts you see that that's what is causing the cataclysmic things and the rest satan is trying to impose and the bible says bring in every other thought so when you pray there are many thoughts that are tempted to make you act like them when someone is possessed with a devil what happens a spirit uses him as a medium so he can use a cat in the night it can use an owl just anything are you listening to me the most important thing is to find a medium so your the native doctor in your village becomes the manifestation of that demonic word and she comes out and holds a stick and like the living logos she says let there be death in this land because she is a medium communicating the thought of satan what happens things begin to change so when a son of light steps into the territory god says hallelujah finally i've gotten somebody who can communicate my thoughts then what happened satan deceives the person to start looking for money and god is saying what is all this i spent all the time to bring you so that you can come in you see how many men are disappointing god and suddenly this man wants to be an expression of god's thought then one woman comes to carry him now the guy is disaligned god is there he's here god says turn right he said god says squat down now he's so disaligned that's the state of the current church in nigeria there is so much disalignment that oneness we are not a perfect expression of the thoughts of god are you listening to me so we have many prophets but nobody can tell us the future of Boko haram nobody can tell us what is happening in the country nobody can give us inspiration and direction but we can prophesy your pocket that's the degree to which when it gets to finances we align quickly to the holy ghost and then he communicates that we have refused to allow him to prune us and deal with us so that we come into a point where we become territorial influences but as many who will allow themselves you see that and subject yourself through prayer through the disciplines of the spirit you come into alignment so you study the word of god to gain understanding of his principles see the word of god from today like a textbook are you listening to me your physics textbook makes you a physicist your chemistry textbook makes you what a chemist the word of god makes you what the manifestation of the living logos so the word of god is the textbook newspapers cannot make you become the manifestation of the word. are you listening to me so i cherish my bible because in it is the capacity to cause me in partnership with the holy ghost to come to a point where i become the manifestation of the word of god so i can be walking on the street and suddenly a demon sees me there and starts moving back what did the demon see a degree of alignment and god designed it in such a way that every time you align he releases the anointing every time you align he releases the anointing the anointing he gives you is a testimony i mean genuine anointing are you listening to me not stage managed anointing so he releases the anointing and then you can stand you leaned on this place what happened a substance of the power of the word of god leaned here are you listening to me and the bible says when that river flows anything that was dead comes alive now you take your hands and walk away someone comes possessed with a devil the word of god touched this place so any other thing that touches the word of god doesn't care who it has a job bring it to the obedience of christ this guy touches this table and starts shouting why 
because the word of god cannot return until it's sent sent does not mean spoken sent means somebody moved it from one location to the other so you move the manifestation of that word are you listening to me you laid your hands here the word of god touched this place see if you have this revelation then you will know that first you are a carrier of the word second you are in a journey to become the manifestation of that word it is only at that time so when i'm ministering to this guy listen to me i just stand and in one minute i see that lord you want to touch someone and you are seeking a vessel find one in me so the hands of jesus as my hands are coming to him i'm seeing it the father from his throne suddenly you touch someone are you listening to me and then you find him fall under the anointing the same person will hug and jump on your back and nothing will happen to him not necessarily because you have changed but at that point god is not trying to remove and cast anything are you listening to me if you will get this you will walk in a level of anointing so god can do without you but now that he has chosen that you become an expression of him will you be faithful are you listening to me you step into your hostel and the devil is tormenting someone and the person says god can you help me you just had that didn't you so what will you do about it because you are supposed to be the manifestation of the logos and archbishop benson who i will say lord you don't need to come down i'm here what a man we write books about generals they should come and write generals in nigeria because men did things in this place and he looks at a man whose face had been beaten and he told the guy lift your face to the heavens the headquarters he said lord this guy was made in your image if this is how your face looks like then leave him like that suddenly a creative miracle happens the word becoming flesh so when a man of god comes into a meeting for those of you who don't honor vessels and say the most important thing is god let me tell you something it is a difficult thing for god to find a vessel that can align so a man steps into a building and changes the climate of that place because he entered with a depth of alignment to the holy ghost and while he's standing as he's speaking he's communicating there's how you hear certain preachings you you put your hand on your head you don't even know what is pinching you you can't tell it's like fire it's like hammer then you just stand up because you can't even sit down it's as if they poured hot water on you then cold water the word finding expression because sometimes you will see that the english that was spoken was simple and basic you would try speaking the same thing even if it's to repeat that tip and you find out that you're not making any sense because it's not about the english so you go to a crusade and you are speaking and somebody who may not necessarily be spirit filled is interpreting it are you listening to me and you say cripples stand up and the guy says I don't, he says cripples should stand up in yoruba or in Igbo or in in whatever language and then the cripples just stand up and they themselves are shocked they are saying this is not um, this is a joke no 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 the word of god found expression through a man i have found my servant david question how many people were on earth that god will be looking for a man you see that when god is looking for a man you get the concept of the man now god is looking for an aligned vessel who will become an expression many times we just sing and say oh living logos oh god can you begin to see yourself i know some of you will think it's heresy how can you say you are a manifestation of the word of god yes sir yes sir There's a prophet that calls himself an oracle. Prophets are real oracles. So, to what degree 
have you become a manifestation of the word of god the degree to which you have embraced the ministry of the holy spirit are you seeing that the degree to which if god were to come and preach by himself the degree to which i have aligned to him you can calculate it mathematically as the difference in error between what god would have done and what i would have done are you listening to me when the degree is minimal i have tried when the degree is wide kai i messed up you see that so a preacher sorry a preacher begins to pray and says oh lord god i pray that i will deliver your word with accuracy what is he doing he's opening himself to the holy ghost and when he comes the holy ghost says i want to anoint people from congo correct and then you call out the people from congo why not those who are staying here why not the ushers who swept this place because that is what the father wants to do and if it is god's mind there will be a performance you see that a performance a performance now listen the holy spirit listen listen the holy spirit did not tell me to carry a handkerchief and put on this lady are you listening to me but i put the handkerchief anyway and what happened there was a performance so was that an expression of the word of god yes because the motif was not to display power the motif was to bring you into perfect maturity which is what the written word says is the ministry of the apostles and the prophets so if i comply with that if my demonstration is to achieve that goal god says son you're on target go ahead are you are you listening to me so your father married your mother an unbeliever so the issue of hearing god was out of the question correct father and mother they met in the beer parlor and then it so happened that in the process of 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 ordering the beer they got married praise god now listen it looks like they have missed out on the will of god but all hope is not lost because the written word can give them a mindset that can still permit the activity of the holy ghost to find expression that's why the bible says is there hope for a tree though it be cut so a man of god who marries his wife and they say you marry the witch and he leaves as a stupid man because you need to understand that if you are a true man of god bring her into alignment so we have all kinds of prophets who are breaking homes and they call it the word of god after having six children they say marry a second wife this woman is a witch she just whether consciously or unconsciously opened up herself to become a manifestation of what so the woman nobody is bad in themselves are you listening to me so what happens is by the ministry of the power of god you bring her and then teach her the word of god suddenly after five years the same witch suddenly stands to become an oracle of glory are you listening to me if you understand that you know that there is no hope for anybody there is there's no hopeless situation for anybody your brother can take the last bottle of rock as he's taking it because of your intercession what happened w what are you doing you are giving expression suddenly while he's trying to acclimatize to his stupor he sees an angel and he says look at what you are doing to the temple of the holy spirit suddenly there is an encounter your intercessory ministry gave room for the mind of christ to find expression prayer ban you now see that your prayer is useful because every time you are praying you are saying lord what you want to do in eni please let joshua selma not be stubborn to disalign are you listening to me so you are praying you are praying you are praying so people will say prayer doesn't matter just speak the word you see the nonsense they are saying because if you understand what the bible says you will know that speaking is one of the major tool to express the word but that's not the only tool if your lifestyle does not conform you are still frustrating the word from finding expression 
praise God God doesn't want you to have HIV your mouth is saying I won't have HIV but your legs lead you to a place you have HIV what happened you are lying to another thought result HIV is there hope of course the miracle service but until then I'm saying you have aligned to something else so you see that many preachers are aligning to different things somebody just comes and they are preaching all kinds of things on stage and they say I bring you a rema from heaven uh -uh. hold on don't deceive us we will know whether this word because we also have the spirit of God who is searching the mind of God so if what you are speaking is the mind of God deep will call on to deep there will are you listening to me there will have you seen people preach some messages and you you are not mocking them but you know that in our, this is not what God signed out for delivery today this guy carried his old wine from wherever and he's on his own he may cry he may sweat give me another handkerchief it doesn't matter to what degree I'm, I'm teaching you to discern spiritual things so when somebody comes to your house and tells your father I'm a prophet wonderful the word of God is here to confirm your prophecy five days ago you were at the bank and you withdrew some money it's at the back of your room true but the word of god is searching both the spirit and then the soul where flesh is hidden the word of god does not just stop in the spirit it's a discerner of the bones and so he's searching his spiritual intent his solical intent and his bodily intent and at a point you find out that from the spirit this is correct you receive correctly but in the realm of your soul there is a blockage this is not true you are a genuine prophet oh but this word you gave me i don't receive it please are you learning something the living logos so you become the manifestation of god's word listen peter knew this he says such as i have at what point did he know he had it listen where's that handkerchief i've thrown it away we are going to pray shortly watch this do i have this do i have a handkerchief please follow me do i have a handkerchief am i trying to guess whether or not i have it now if you ask me please give me a handkerchief i said well i don't sell handkerchiefs but such i know i have something if i say i don't have it i'm lying i know i have something i have something he gave me by grace that's that's what i was trying to achieve when i called that little girl to tell her sweetheart you have something when tolu laid hands now you have something when the devil wants to abort your destiny what do you say satan i have something when someone looks at you and say you are nobody say come on do you know what you are saying nobody when i am already in progress becoming a manifestation of the world such as i have you can step home and they say bless we're in trouble you say no that language is not in this territory at least i am here relax such as i have let us know what god wants concerning this then you go and lock yourself they say why are you praying you say i'm praying because i want to connect with the headquarters i need to find out what the mind of god is while you are praying god gives you a note of confidence he says relax and you come out and tell your father he told me relax and so you begin to create the conditions that can make them relax and tell all the people that say hey say you can have a nice day please close the gate god has told us relax i am acting as the living logos christians listen to me if all we have to do in our life is to quote and just talk it i don't have we will soon stand up and confess the word but your confession must come from a revelation otherwise you are wasting your time you see why some people's prayer life although they are generating energy there is not power because they don't even know what they are doing they are praying because they just want to afflict themselves and console themselves that they are being spiritual praise God I'm the manifestation of the Word of God I believe this if I tell you you are blessed I tell you you are blessed 
if I open my mouth I give his thought opportunity to find expression if I lay my hands upon you and say you are blessed you are blessed why because he told me I will be a blessing so the Holy Ghost must not give me a rema to prophesy to you I can tell you based on the knowledge of his principles as written in scripture are you listening to me the Holy Ghost did not tell us necessarily are you listening to me to raise an offering today we understand that every time it's time to publicize God's work and to do the things of the kingdom we afford people an opportunity to sow and so based on that knowledge of the written principle so both the logos of God as his written thoughts his impressions are you following me now scripture and the logos of God as his revealed utterance together can make you be like Christ do you understand now so your Bible study life becomes richer every time you are reading the Bible hear a voice God is speaking to me so that you finish and say I had a word from God and people say tell us the dream you say no Bible study they say we are looking for a dream because they do not know what the word of God is so somebody can look and say Adeboe can say there's somebody here and my father said I should tell you it will be well with you even if God did not say it the spirit I don't need to hear God listen I don't need to hear God to save a sinner correct why because the, the written principles of God tells me that he's, this is desire that no man will perish so at that point God does not tell you that if he doesn't want you to do it for any unique reason he tells you stop just leave the person for an appointed time but until then I will walk with the manifestation of God's word do you believe this please so God does not tell you the lady to marry and you stand up and walk in obedience with God's word and you get a wife and you marry let no prophet talk nonsense to you the logos of God found expression in your life are you listening to me please this is why every time you hear us say holy spirit we revere you is because sometimes we cannot find exactly the revealed will of god for today as written in scripture so it must come as what a manifestation of that thought in the utterance of the spirit so when god gives us visions when he gives us his words he's only trying to get himself into the scene using human agents who will permit him praise god two prayer points tonight first we are going to say lord grant me grace to take your word and the ministry of your holy spirit seriously second lord i offer myself to come into a level of alignment that everything you want in the heavens it will be done in the earth through me rise up on your feet never forget this teaching it will bring you to the place of the anointing when you are laying hands on people don't think about yourself think about God flowing through you when you are speaking a word of blessing the word walks w-a-l-k the word walks the word talks so I'm a blessing go ahead and pray say Lord I take your thoughts as contained in the Bible seriously and I take the ministry of your spirit let there be a generation of men who will walk in signs and wonders I tell you it will walk in every area of your life Lord I take your word seriously the next time you study scripture you're not just trying to feel spiritual you want to get the mindset of the father the next time you go to pray among other things you want to download the mind of Christ now lift your voice and pray say Lord I yield my spirit my soul every faculty in my body let it become an agency a medium 
through which your word will find expression in healing the sick in blessing lives in shifting climates changing territories based on that you can begin to prophesy I am the word of God manifest no baby can die in my womb in the name of Jesus I am the word of God manifest I am the word of God manifest to bless the world come on pray I'm not a nobody I have something can't take a fire I have something I have an anointing I have an ability to cooperate with heaven and let its will be done pray say Lord I align let me become a manifestation a manifestation a manifestation hallelujah listen listen Hear me. Escos, our retreat has started. So, this revelation of the word of God made manifest becomes the basis for character development. Are you listening to me? So, every time you are going to do what is not right, what happens? There is a revelation, a buffer. There is a buffer in your mind that brings you back and says, remember, God is depending on you. Say, God is depending on me. It's not heresy. Say it. Yes. He can use stones. But since he has chosen to use me, oh, such as I have, prophesy to yourself. I have something. We are rounding up. Please say it. I may not have cash in my pocket right now, but I have something. The creative power of the Holy Ghost, the anointing, I'm a blessing. Tell your classmates to rejoice. They are privileged to have you as their classmate. Tell your roommates to rejoice. They are privileged. Tell your family to rejoice. They are privileged to have you such as I have I'm a blessing hallelujah prophesy such as I have the grace to prosper such as I have the wisdom of God such as I have the anointing of the Holy Ghost such as I have the faith of God I can never be discouraged I can never fail prophesy I have something hallelujah when I pray in tongues I hear the mind of the spirit I'm not stranded the Holy Ghost speaks to me I'm a blessing to my family souls are saved through me when I talk the word talks when I walk the word walks when I stretch my hands the word is stretching his hands when I preach the word is preaching when I lay my hands the word of God comes upon that person get this revelation and you will walk in signs and the Lord walking with them confirming those who have become the world with signs hallelujah hallelujah now listen Jeremiah 1 verse 12 hold on you now understand I am alert and active watching over Joshua my word to perform it I'm watching over him to perform it. and the Lord walking with them confirming the word as they lay hands he confirms as they speak he confirms because the bible says god confirms the word of his mess so the word is not just bible it's you who is walking 
he said i am watching watching suddenly he sees joshua selman coming he said praise god this demon possessed person can live holy ghost begins to begin to move and then because i have aligned suddenly i start sensing the world wants to find expression the world wants to find expression and the lord says lift your hands and finally he finds a man when i lift my hands god says in his throne yes i have saved this person and because i know listen that is not just me he has made me become like him i give him back the glory but then you cannot deny the fact that it flowed through you it's not pride are you listening to me don't just make it an object of boasting and say ah this no 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 that's why i can tell you lift up your hands and you will lift up your hands and i'll begin to speak and the power of god is falling i experimented that with a little girl you know why because her degree of alignment is greater than that of many of you you see that she's a little girl there is not much that she knows when you start praying for the sick start with the small children you accomplish result faster hallelujah such as you have this is what we are training you to become so listen don't be in a situation and everybody say hey you too you say hey god is saying is there no man is there no man 430 years the israelites were crying god was saying just one man just one. you see listen listen it is on this basis god said touch not my anointed because he said you don't know how hard it took me to find one man and get him to a point that he is aligning you touch him i rather a nation of unyielded people die than this one man die are you listening to me that's why i told you some people cannot just die anyhow although god is mighty some people have become so valuable are you such a person it is on that basis you can say though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over so when a demon looks at you and says you see this revelation i'm giving many of you all these demons and devils that come to oppress people don't drive them invite them and you will see what will happen revelation is a door in the spirit when you catch it the door of that realm is open up to you and demons see you and know that you have changed you came with a new light and they will oppress you again satan has never made me not sleep since the days of bz when he was oppressing me when i caught the light that not only is god high up there and i'm saying hey, 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 god do something no hey, oh, if you don't do something no 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 katabaya such as i have he said you are the light jesus said i am the light and he said you are also the light you are the light say i am the light i am the light i'm not motivating you this is true so you go and meet some of you need to go home and go and meet a project that has been they've been trying to build for 10 years and just enter and remember the word works w-a-l-k the word just entered your uncompleted building and you say in the name of the lord jesus lord i give you express permission to find expression that the hand of zerubbabel that has begun this work that same hand suddenly the door opens up and blessings come next time you see a woman who has not taken in what do you do if you come as a man of god you are on your own come as the manifestation of the world such as i have do you notice the herbalists are confident people you never come and meet them they say kai this thing is hard but we can do something what is the next thing they do they start consulting a higher power they start singing and dancing and while they are dancing you are watching they are dancing but they are invoking something you are just watching and say ah this guy but they are dancing 
the moment they finish dancing don't answer your weight suddenly confidence has come because they've had something and then they look at you you are 30 years yes sir ah you have three children yes sir their confidence came from what a higher power so if they have not had the mind of the oracle they can't tell you anything this is how we are are you listening to me when you come and meet me if god does not speak a rema i will use the wisdom in the word of god to guide you such as i have this is my mindset i have a very healthy esteem about myself based on this revelation if there are two people who will be useful to nigeria i know it's me and somebody this is not pride i know it do you have that mindset father tonight we thank you for teaching us about your word as your thoughts that has been written through the hands of holy men and that by the ministry of the holy spirit the utterance of god the visions of god are also the manifestations of his word that the word of god is not just english but anything that is able to grant his thoughts expression here in the earth lord we choose to be manifestations of this word i pray for you in the name that is above all names that from today you will begin to go and walk wonders in the name that is above every other name go and become the manifestation of the word of god i'm telling you believe in yourself go and dust those projects you've left whether it be business whether it be for your family whether it be your dreams that satan i deliver you from complex that comes from your background in the name of jesus stop trying to do things to receive acceptance you have the greatest acceptance god accepted you and made you the manifestation say i am a blessing say it from your heart now just lay your hands on the shoulder of somebody next to you and bless the person go ahead please do it if you know that you are the manifestation of the world if you don't believe in what you are saying keep quiet give the word expression there's something the father is thinking about your neighbor can you communicate it say it you are not wrong rise up be a champion you are a citizen of the kingdom you will see the power of god through your life through your own hands tell the person i'm anointed and i bless you i command your dying life to come alive i command your dying business it will happen through your own hands you have something your words are not empty your words are not empty there are arrows entering the spirit to shape the destiny of your neighbor say i bless your business walk out of here with favor i impact long, long life prosperity glory i lay my hands upon you and i release you into visions dreams prophetic encounters lay your hands i declare the angelic hallelujah hallelujah hear me carry the spirit if you shake my hands even if i'm sleeping your life will never be the same i assure you if i sit on a seat and you sit on that seat something will i'm not talking of manifestation i'm talking of a door that will open if you get this revelation then we have increased the portal through which the word can find expression thy kingdom come thy will 
that is resident in vessels be done listen so it is not about a man of God you see the point it is about channels through which God wants to find the expression our job is to bring you to that position so go back this week and begin to speak hitherto you have been speaking as a man of God or an apostle or a prophet before you speak take one second the word works w-a-l-k the word works the manifestation of the word Joshua Selman has come into your house to visit you you begin to thank God because God can find expression prophecies will come blessings will come utterances will come listen hear me a ministry can become an expression of the Word of God you see that are you seeing that now so as a ministry we can say Lord we agree that we become portals so that corporately we will always be a manifestation so when anybody wants to find out what is God saying they'll say come for koinonia not because we are marketing ourselves that we agree to say Lord as a family of faith we permit you that at every time T step in hallelujah we have to stop we're out of time many of you need to go back and think about this thing you will see the supernatural power that will be released from this revelation go back home and look at your hands and say i've been carrying a blessing around me and i've been looking for blessings go back and look at yourself in the mirror say i've been trying to become like someone whereas god has vested so much in me the next time you go to pray when your body says i'm tired tell the body go and look for a way and enter your room and sleep but for me i need to be more alive your body says i'm tired tell it the best i can do is to give you pure water right now i'm in business trying to find out what heaven is trying to do. so your praying and fasting doesn't become an act of religion to pride yourself and say 30 days fasting there are people who have fasted for 100 days and they came out worse than they were before they entered because they entered as we we gather it as religious crowns but when someone fast is this not the fast that i have declared then shall your light which is the word break forth find the expression hallelujah thank you father now please listen it's okay jordan here i don't know if you came with it the book we are going to be reading is the final quest please everybody buy it and read it the final quest hallelujah this is a training camp the final quest by rejoiner i think some copies are available buy it manifestation of the word hallelujah we we'll receive another round of criticism for telling people that they are the word but I'm telling you this is a revelation that will set you above we have taught about alignment and submission to the governing authority of Christ
gather it's an opportunity for us to express how much we need you Lord tonight brief moments that we have together give us a deeper passion for you cause us to love you more than life itself hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord god bless you please be seated To accomplish what concerns me today, He is able more than able. Hallelujah! To handle everything that comes my way. You believe this song? Join me and sing. He is able.
your majesty oh worship him tonight his presence is here all to jesus be your glory to be in the presence of God and not know and not be changed but when you come before his presence and your heart is open you will be changed Haggai 2 verse 9 the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former saith the lord of hosts and in this place i will give peace saith the lord jump to verse 20. jump to verse 20. and again the word of the lord came unto haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month saying Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Look up. How many of you know that there are shakings happening around the world right now? He said, I will shake the heavens. I will shake the earth. In a way and a manner that no man can pretend not to know what is happening. Next verse. And I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. So this is coming to pass. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. And I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the hidden. Is this in your Bible? This is God saying, this is what I'm doing in this season. He said, and I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. And the horses and their riders shall come down. Everyone by the sword of his brother. 23. I want you to read this together. One to read. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take thee, put your name there, my servant, put your father's name there, saith the Lord, and will make thee a signet. He said, and when all these shakings are happening, this is what I will be doing with you. He said, he called him by name and called the name of his father so that you will not be mistaken. He said, I will, you know what a signet is? A signet is the king's symbol of authority. When a king makes laws, he uses his signet ring and stamps it. He said, when all these are happening, this is the prophecy for you. Because you are my servant, he said, I will make you a symbol of royalty because I have chosen you. If you believe that, say Amen. 
he began to speak to Zerubbabel about the glory of the latter house. First and foremost, he told him, he said, do you remember, those of you who are old enough, do you remember this house? Talking about the nation of Israel, the temple. He said, compared to what you see today, it's nothing to write home about. He said, but don't be discouraged for I am still moving. There is something about to do. Where is the power, the ability, the light, the authority? We talk so much about the days of God's generals. We talk so much about mighty men. We talk so much about mighty works. Terrible things in righteousness. The Bible talks about certain kinds of people that were almost not like human beings. In the book of Hebrews 11. It says, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouths of lions. Where are these kinds of people? What dimension of glory did they walk in that, bring, that brought them into this depth of kingdom reality? But right now, what we see happening in the church and in our television is, is, not a, is nothing to be compared with the things that have been done on the earth. But the Lord is saying, do not be discouraged. In case many of you have been weary and are saying, Lord, you have told us that you will do mighty things in our days. And he left Zerubbabel with a prophecy in his mind. He said, for the glory of this house you are seeing, is about to surpass the glory that you have even seen before. He said, and I will fill this house with my glory. Hallelujah. And I hope you realize that in the New Testament, the temple is not just a building like this. The Bible says, Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so God is saying in this season, He wants to fill your life with His glory. He wants you to be so full of His glory. So full of His power. So full of His grace. That He will use you as a symbol. His signet ring upon the earth. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that this is what God is doing in this season? God is searching for men. Every time there is catastrophe and disaster. In our first service in January, I told us that I saw a lot of commotion happening in the earth. Death, murder, all kinds of things. But in the midst of it, the Lord told us this is a season of supernatural experience. It is the character of the spirit to see the end from the beginning. And he speaks as though he's already in the end. Because you see, God does not have a process in his life. The beginning and the end are all present before him. So he speaks from his realm of reality. Hallelujah. And he said in this season, Zerubbabel prophesied that I will shake the heavens and the earth. And that the glory of the latter house will far exceed the glory of the former. The glory of all the people in your family, the thing you are about to do. He said, I will walk a walk in your days that even if they told any man, he will not believe. I will walk a walk. You have seen what your father have done. You have seen what your mother, you've seen what the people around. But God is saying, I will walk a walk in your life. That if I told you, you will not even believe. Oh, this I believe. I'm a believer. I believe God. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. The performance is only for them that believe. Hallelujah. I will feel you with glory. This is the year and the season that God wants to bring us into his glory. That you will be so full of the glory, the presence of God. Hallelujah. But how will this happen? John 12. God is going to stir up and activate something in your spirit tonight. Hallelujah. I'm just giving us a charge and we pray. We want us to do some prayer in this place today. We should prepare ourselves for the miracle service. Verse 23. Now, 
every time Jesus is talking, listen, because the Bible says every word that proceeds from his mouth is sufficient to keep you alive. Hallelujah. Anytime you are studying scripture and Jesus is talking, pay attention. This is what Jesus is saying. And Jesus answered them and said, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be what? Glorified. Next verse. So he said, This is the hour that the Son of Man will be glorified. But how shall it happen? He said, Verily, verily. In other words, I stake my reputation at this. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. The Bible says it abided alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. I want to share with you tonight very briefly the mystery of death and glory. I want to show you that in the journey of the believer, there is a relationship between death and glory. This is a message that has not been understood by the body of Christ. We want power. We want anointing. What makes certain people so anointed, so full of power, so full of authority, so full of grace, so full of the favor of the Lord? Hallelujah. Jesus began to speak and said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. The very next verse, he tells us how he's about to be glorified. He said, except a corn of wheat for that means there is a relationship between death and glory. Listen to me, saints of God. If you want to become a great man, a man, a mighty man in the spirit, this message is for you tonight. This is a prayer meeting. Hallelujah. And Jesus begins to relate death and glory. Haggai prophesies that is the intention of God in this season to bring us into greater glory. And Jesus is saying, in fact, it's not just the season. The hour has come. And he's teaching us the principle that until the activity of death finds expression in you, you cannot manifest and walk in the glory of God. I will reverence you, Lord. I will I will reverence you, Lord. I'm teaching you the art of the secret place. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. Apokasha I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence. There is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will, you, Lord. When God is set to bring his glory in your life. The first thing that happens to you is you begin to die. Now, this, listen, when you begin to die in the spirit, that's the time to rejoice. Hallelujah. Because when a corn of wheat dies, out of that decay will spring forth a new seed. And it will begin to bear fruit. Paul says, so then, death works in us, that life will work in you. The degree to which you are dead is the degree to which you can minister. Only dead men can carry the glory of God. 
when the glory of God comes, the first thing it does is kill you and then it makes you alive. That's why Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. He said, nevertheless, I suddenly found myself alive again. But this time around, I do not live by my flesh. I live by another life, another law, another set of values. Hallelujah. When God is said to bring his glory to your life, listen, the first thing that will happen is that you will die to your old mindset. Hold on. The Bible says the glory of the latter house. In other words, the latter house is not the same as the former house, correct? When God, the Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Many of us want to just tidy up the old wine skin. God wants to tear it completely and replace another one. He said you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Old mindsets, old ideologies, old principles. The word of God gives you a new mindset. Not the mindset of your village. Not the mindset of your culture. See, when, when the word of God begins to walk in you, you begin to die to your old ideologies. Suddenly you find out that the things that attract and interest you are changing. This is the sign that you are prepared for the glory. Your appetite, the things that compel your desire, begin to change. Death is walking in you. Hallelujah. Your mindset begins to change. Your plane of perception of both spiritual and natural things begin to change. You see things from another perspective. Death is walking in you. Then you begin to die to the flesh. You find out that your flesh has no hold on you again. Listen to me. A lot of believers do not have the grace and the control over their flesh. Paul said in Romans 7, he says, but with my spirit I serve the Lord. And then in my members, my body, I see another law walking in me. So that the things I would want to do, I do not find myself doing them. And the things I do not want to do, that's what I find myself doing. He said, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Although a great apostle, he was communicating his frustration. Hallelujah. The flesh. When you begin to die to your flesh, the things of the spirit no longer become a burden. Are you listening to me? Things like prayer, things like fasting, things like your commitment in the house of God. It no longer becomes a thing of force. You now have a revelation. The grip of your flesh is no longer there. Hallelujah. The word of God does not become a burden for you again. You will begin to flow naturally with the Holy Spirit. Then you will die to the world, the cosmos, the system. You will die to the mindset of the system. The Bible says, love not the world. It says, he that loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The word there is eros. The word is lost. Hallelujah. A craving, an uncontrollable, unquenchable, godless appetite for the world. The more you begin to die to the world, you will find out that the things of the Spirit become your passion. This is not about pastor. Are you listening to me? This has nothing to do with ministry. Because there are some of you looking at me right now. You are so indifferent about the things of God. Let me announce to you that you are still alive in your flesh. Forget about the issue of glory. Glory is not a thing of prophecy. Are you listening to me? I can't prophesy glory into your life. Glory is a realm you attain unto. It's not receive glory. No. There's nobody that has prophesied glory to anybody from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of glory. He's the one who brings you into that realm of glory. 
where you become supernatural. You become unusual. You become powerful. Full of light. Full of grace. And you can chart the course of your destiny based on the integrity of the word of God. This is what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. But the hardest thing for believers, listen to me, is to die. Many believers don't like that subject of death because death connotes inconvenience. You will die to your ego. You will die to your plans. You will die to your ambitions. You will die to everything. Your whole world, what you have, what you have built, the tower of Babel that you have built, when God comes into your life, you will not just put a crown on it. You will shatter that tower of Babel and begin to rebuild a new city after his own pattern. This is what is not taught in church. We teach people that you come as you are. Just have whatever you have. Just add whatever God brings to you. That's not true. God empties you completely. You cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. Many of us are still carrying our old wine skin. Your old mindset. Your old value systems. You don't want to leave them. You are holding on to them. You are afraid of the unknown. You are afraid of launching into God. You are afraid of your friends. You are afraid of loneliness. You are afraid of your associations. You are afraid of the embarrassment and the stigma and the temporary um, inconveniences that come as we contend to walk in the Spirit. Romans 8 verse 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings, the constraints, the setbacks of this present time is not worthy. Hallelujah. When you see a woman pregnant, look up everybody. When you see a woman pregnant, there is another life. There is a baby in her womb. Are you listening to me? It will destabilize her posture temporarily. Is that correct? It's not whether she likes it or not. She will find herself bending by force. So long as she wants to keep that baby, she will do unusual things. You may not like it. Her appetite will change because of the child she's carrying. Are you listening to me? She'll wake up by 2 o'clock and say she wants to drink um, uh, milk. And then you bring it, she said, no, it was jollof rice, she said. Now, this is, this is a product of something that is happening. Are you listening to me? Her ideologies change. She begins to visit the hospital consistently. When you see these things, it begins to point an arrow to you that very soon this woman is going to deliver a child. Hallelujah. So when the Holy Ghost is birthing glory in you, there will be a season of travail. The Bible says, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. Listen to me, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will not deceive you. The birth of anything valuable is painful. Are you listening to me? The birth of anything valuable is painful. Anything at all. The Bible says there is no man that warred who will entangle himself with civilian affairs. When you realize that you are part of the army of God, the glory house that Zerubbabel saw and prophesied, you realize that it's a season of glory. Now is the time to constrain yourself. As you abide by the principles of God, it will cost you. It will cost you your reputation. It will cost you your friends. Hear me! You cannot want this side and want that side. Uh -uh. The Bible says no man can serve two masters at a time. You cannot serve your friends and serve God. You cannot serve your ego and serve God. You cannot feed your desires and feed God. Ladies, listen to me very carefully. Because you are the ones that are most vulnerable at this time. You love God until you find the things that your desires crave for. I need you. 
I need you. Nothing, no place, no one else will do. I need you. I need you. For you satisfy the longing inside. Some of you should not be singing this song because you are lying. You are just singing it because you are enjoying it. But you are telling lies. You are telling lies. While you are saying, Lord, I need you, God is saying, it's a lie. The angels are saying it's a lie. See, listen. You must get to a point in your life where you make up your mind and vow. It's an oath of allegiance. It's an oath of fraternity with God. You say, Lord, I'm on your side once and for all. There is no doubt again I'm on your side. If it means me not getting married to be on your side, so be it. If it means me not being rich in this life, so be it. If it means me not having any reputation, not having any church, not having any ministry, so be it. You cannot love your desires and love the glory of God. No ways. But can I tell you something? If you pay the price for that glory, the Bible says... The glory of the latter house, what God will do in your life when he's done with you, will far exceed what you would have desired for yourself. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I know the thoughts that I... You know, listen, Christians have this ugly way of thinking that God is the one who will wreck their lives. Look at me. If you have that mindset, repent this night. As we start praying, before joining our, our prayer point, just find somewhere and lie down and say, Lord, I thought you would destroy me. Hallelujah. A lot of people believe that when you come to God, He will just make you a failure. He will make you a useless person. It's preachers that talk that, not the word of God. Hallelujah. In my Bible tells me, I know the thoughts I think what you see at the Lord. That means God is thinking about you. God is thinking. You don't need to wonder what is in his mind. The word of God is a mirror that tells you what is in the mind of God. The living logos. The thoughts of God. I know what God is thinking about me. That one day Joshua Selman will be a blessing to the world. That one day beyond the shores of Zaria, beyond the shores of this nation, we will do great and mighty things for the king. This is what God is thinking about me. I know what God is thinking about me. God is saying, son, I can do more with you than I've done so far. So don't you allow any pride and any apostle and all this nonsense that people use and deceive themselves. Don't let it get to you. The journey is still far. I know what God is thinking about me. That son, if you can pay the price now, the days of glory will come. You know, you people sometimes see the ministers or see some of the leaders or see our lives and you just believe. That teaching that you just lie down and God can call whom he can call. Jacob have I loved, um, Esau have I hated. Paul said, and let me correct that, I am what I am by the grace of God. Alright? He said, but this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than he all. He said, nevertheless, it is the grace of God. Many of you like teachings on favor. I teach about it. But your concept of favor is a window to run away from the process. There is a name for you, a thief. That's what the Bible says. It says thieves and robbers are the ones who want to follow the back door. There's no following the back door with spiritual things. I tell you the truth. There are many people who are running, doing ministry now. They will carry over many dealings with the spirit. Have you ever seen a matured man with short nika going back to primary school and sitting? Because many people are jumping the dealings of God. We want ministry. We want branches. We want to go on air. Some of you are already like that. You are carrying that mindset. You are on your way going. God has held your legs together. Tied your hands like the hands of Samson and drag you here. He said, collect that mindset before you become a casualty to yourself. If you fail a course as a student, you will carry it over. You just have a few months. If you fail a course as a general in the spirit, no matter how old you are, you will wear that short maker again and sit down in that play class. That's why many people, I don't say this to condemn people, many people after they have risen, even if it is 20 years in ministry, 
if they must continue with God, somehow they will still go back and take those extra courses with the Spirit again. So what is your hurry for? The Holy Spirit is running with you at 80 km per hour. You see one zealous person just pass at 160. You say, Lord, this is twice my size. You hold on. Very soon you see people packing his bones and his legs. He has had a casualty with something else. This is how people, people run. That you are called does not mean you are already sent. Listen, listen, listen. My brother, come. I called him. Have I sent him? Start going. Did I send him? But he was genuinely called. That's what a lot of believers are doing. God says, on your mark, you tell yourself, go, and you start moving. Then you get to the point where you need God's mercy, and you say, where is the one that sent me? God says, uh, where is the one that called you? I'm here. The one that sent you should respond. So you see a preacher come and stand before people and say, you members are not even taking care of me. Huh? Is this what the Bible says? Please don't yoke the people. Go and meet the person that sent you. God didn't send you as a preacher to be a burden to them. God sent you to be a blessing, not a burden. If you have problems, go back to the person who sent you. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything. God called the 12 disciples. They walked with him. A day came, he said, now I'm going to send you. When he sent them, all of them came back rejoicing. They said, even the demons. There was a day he did not send them. Can you remember? They sent themselves. What happened that day? There was a day they sent themselves in the Bible. See, many of you don't read your Bible to learn. You just read it for education. There was a day they sent themselves. Jesus was at the Mount of Transfiguration. And they were happy. They didn't bring their epileptic vision. Hallelujah. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. Say, Lord, say after me, Lord, no matter what it will cost me, I will pay the price for your glory. Say one more time, Lord, no matter what it will cost me, I will pay the price for the glory. You may pay the price when you are supposed to use your, your, your money and buy cake for your birthday. God tells you, go and buy a Christian gift. He will come and meet you and say, happy birthday, nothing for us, you're not in your place. I would plan to celebrate many more birthdays. There's nothing for you. And they look, they say, you said, this is your God you are talking about. You just keep quiet. Hallelujah. Ladies, you may not have any other shirt. You may have only two shirts. Wash one and hide it. Keep using the money to buy the books and the Bibles. Some of you need to add some serious desire for your life. Go and buy tapes and CDs. You have watched X-Men. You have watched all those things. When will you stop watching it? It's acting. Say after me, acting. Wake up from sleep and start. The Bible says, wake up, thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you life. There are many people sleeping. Get materials that will help your life. You hear me say this thing every time. A day will come. You will not hear this thing the way it is like this again. The Bible says in the days of Samuel when the word of God was cast. There is no man that would deceive me into running away from the price I'm paying for the glorious future that I have. Let me ask you a question. What price are you paying? Some of you are not paying anything. So my father will pay for me. Have you heard that song? Your father may let you down. Sing it. Whatever you want to say, he will let you down as long as it's not Jesus Christ. 
I'm challenging you, saints of God. When you hear me preach like this with passion, don't just laugh. Don't just laugh. We're going to Lord, I want your glory in my life. And if it's bitterness that will stop that glory, I die to bitterness. If it's unforgiveness, I die to it. If you must be the one to go and apologize to somebody who offended you, I die to it. What are you willing to pay for the glory? It won't come cheap. The miraculous is not cheap. Somebody met me one time and said, forget it. God is everywhere. I say yes. But his manifested presence with the anointing to perform is not anywhere. And if you doubt, I will call someone who is possessed right in your presence and leave you to struggle with the person. This is not pride. It's not everywhere. The beauty of success is that not everybody will have it. That's what makes it precious. The anointing is precious because not everybody is willing to have it. Brothers and sisters, there is a price to pay. The grace of God comes to enable you to pay that price. There are some cups, no matter how you pray, it won't pass you by. You must drink that cup to the last drop. But when you drink that cup, you will arise with no strength. You will arise, you will mount up with wings like the eagles. Suddenly, the things that make ordinary men fall will keep you standing. You will walk on water and find yourself moving in glory. Do you know something? When that happens, you will only need to write just one book recording your experiences and it can give you enough financial benefits that all your job, your life combined may not give you. Why? Because your experiences are a recording. See, I told you this last week that everything you are doing in the spirit has monetary value. So don't you think you are losing? Hallelujah. Because there are many of us who are like the disciples of God. You are saying, Lord, I'm coming to Koinonia every time. What is my cut in this thing? Are you the only one receiving glory? I'm worshipping you every day. I'm lying down. I'm crying. What is my own in this thing? God is saying, look at me. This is what I'm trying to get out of you. But when he finds you, I'm telling you, listen, listen, listen. Pass the test. Tell your neighbor, pass the test. The test of death. Jesus knew that he had to die. He prayed and said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass me. Some of you will need to break away from some wrong associations. You'll be praying and say, Lord, is there another way of making all of them born again? God said, One day for now, you must leave them. There are many of you that it will cost you. God will give you dangerous instructions. Go and empty your account and sow it in the house of God. You have been binding for years. God is saying, I won't talk to you again until you do the last instruction I gave you. Tonight we are going to pray. And as you pray, many things will die in this place. Honestly, many of you, some desires you've had, many of you, some habits, many different things. Many of you, your mouth, that coal of fire, your own, you don't need it touched. The whole coal was put inside, and you wait there. And then your tongue is purified. Then you can speak. Hallelujah. Many of you have what the Bible calls a lying tongue. You exaggerate things, whether good or bad. You leave going on and say, 90 cripples walk. Say, 90, say, huh? So you are 60. You, you are laughing. You need... These are the things that stop great men from being mighty. We are going to stand up. I'm saying this thing because when we start praying, don't look at me, look at God. We are not stopping soon. My desire is that for every one of us to be powerful, to be a friend of God. In the future, they will ask you, they will say, Esther, what did you do to attract the favor of God like this? You say, I won't lie to you. It's the grace of God, but come, let me show you. Hallelujah. Pastor G, 
Jesus lives in this big house. He didn't build it. And God will slap your mouth and say, Were you there when he was fasting and praying? I asked you to fast. You said no. And I blessed him. Go and look for money and build your own. Since you think I'm stupid. Many of you think God is stupid. If God tells you, leave every other thing and follow me. Let me tell you, just follow him like a fool. If you can be foolish enough to follow God, you'll be wise enough to enjoy the blessings of God. We're going to give all the children in this place biscuits. Protocol, welfare. Is it available? Quietly just find all the children. If you have a child that's from 0 to 10 years, just lift your hands and they'll pass biscuits. We're talking about death now. You know what that means. If you are more than 10 years old, if you see any old hand that is a testimony of living long in this realm, just pass them welfare. We're going to pray. You need to die. You need to die. Many of us need to die. When you die, look at me. Criticism. You see, a dead man cannot respond to criticism again. There are many of you that are always quarreling. At you. you are quarreling everybody in your room. And they are talking about me. I wake up by two. You are still alive to yourself, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. You are going to pray. Are you ready to pray? I don't know how you are going to pray tonight, but you are going to pray seriously. Please give this prayer your attention. This is for your destiny. You want to walk around, go ahead and walk around. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. The first prayer point is you're going to say, Lord, I desire your glory. I desire your glory in this mortal body. I desire your glory. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Help me, Israelites. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I desire your glory. I desire your glory. A realm that no demon, no devil, no power in hell can stand. I desire your glory. Oh God, show me your glory. That was the prayer of Moses. Oh God, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Beyond the things I've known about you. Come on, walk around and pray like generals. Rakateko so prekete, man pros kataya. Put your heart into this prayer tonight. Rekete posha, le cross ko preke prekete, man pros kataya. I desire your glory. I desire your glory. I desire your glory. Anta pras kete le kaposotaya. I desire your glory that I will be a carrier of your glory. Are you praying tonight? Satoke Bosha, Rekete Kepa, Rapaskopaya, nothing, no one, no place. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, your glory. As in the days of old. Show me your glory, O oh God. Show me your glory, O oh God. And I will shake the heavens. And I will shake the earth. Say, Paul, sorry, I can pray. Coin on your prayer tonight. Repo Shataya. Repo Kopiha. Lord, we cry for your glory. Greater levels of your glory. Of your glory. Of your glory. Repo Shataya. This is the generation that will travel until we burn the glory. Maparata Poko Sotaya. Show me your glory. Show 
will be your glory. Are you praying? Are you praying, generals? Rakataposa, man, I don't want anything else. I don't want anything else. Just your glory. Just your glory. For now, my priority is your glory. Not marriage. My priority. Not money. My priority. Not fame. Not power. Show me your glory. Show me your glory, O oh God. I don't want to be a good preacher. Show me your glory. All I need is your glory, not ministry. Show me your glory. Show me your glory, oh God. Some of you need to pray. The Spirit of God is in this place. I want to see your glory. Show me your glory, oh God. Show me your glory. Show me what is forbidden for mortal eyes to see. Take me to realms beyond the natural. Take me on a journey in the spirit. Show me terrible things. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Call on to me. And I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. Koinonia pray tonight. Show me your glory, O oh God. Show me your glory, O oh God. Beyond my personal ambition. Pray. Beyond your academics. Pray. Show me your glory. I tell you, when you find God's glory, you will find prosperity, you will find fame, you will find lifting, you will find favor. Cry for the glory tonight. Lord, we mean business with you tonight. We cry for your glory. Not church as usual, not Christianity as usual. Take us to a new level, a new level, a new level of encounter. <laughs> This is the generation of them that seek thy faith. Come on, generate energy in the spirit. Make sure you are praying in the Holy Ghost. Tonight, don't be tired. This is for your destiny. This is for your destiny. This is for your destiny. As soon as Zion travels. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. I want nothing more, nothing less your glory. I tell you, the mighty presence of God is in this place. Your glory, we cry as a house tonight. Many of you do not know what the glory of God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. Listen. The Bible says, Seeing then, Hebrews 12 verse 1, That we are surrounded 
by so great a cloud of witnesses he said let us therefore lay aside every weight you are going to pray listen this very prayer take note because the holy ghost is going to be working on people one by one as you pray this prayer listen you are, as you pray this you will die to many things are you listening to me the power of god is in this place you will die to many things for many of you as you pray you will find out that that loss will lift like a spirit from you some of you that prayerlessness will lift that anger so listen in the next few minutes if you want to work at whatever just is you and god forget that you came for koinonia tonight instrumentalists help me i need you to help me i need you to help me are you ready now just the symbol that's all i need just the symbol just the symbol lift your voice and pray saints of god let waves drop all God. Ma pros for pekele, rapa katosa, rakata pekete leke, me koprios kopa, ma poto kote kete, rakata pekete, me koprios 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 And it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted, and all nations shall flow to it. And upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. Hallelujah. 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 And Moses said, If I have found favor in thy sight, show me your glory. 
What did Moses know about the glory of God? He didn't say make me a preacher. He didn't say make me a prophet. He didn't say give me money. He said show me your glory. Something tonight has broken in your spirit. Some of you tonight will begin your journey of total surrender. Honest surrender. There are some of you, you don't even need somebody to lead you to Christ now. Right where you are, you're already praying the prayer to be born again. Hallelujah. Listen. We're rounding up. Without the glory of God, we have no ministry. It is this glory that causes transformation. It is this glory that makes you a miracle worker. It is this glory that makes you immune. You are paying the price right now for the glory. These sufferings of this present time. You may look weak. You may in quotes be a failure. Your academics may not even be anything to write home about. But you watch what the glory of God can do in your life. The Bible says there is hope for a tree though it be cut down. He said at the scent of water. For some of you tonight, God has begun a walk with you that will carry you through until the miracle service. It's a dealing of the spirit you cannot stop. It's a fire that has been ignited in your spirit. You will go back and people cannot explain what happened to you. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is what happens in Koinonia that sometimes people do not understand. How will someone just come and suddenly leave just one meeting with a degree of transformation you cannot explain it's not the man of god it's the glory of god this is why it is better for us to have only two people and have the glory than to have a stadium of people and lack the glory it is better for us to remain at the spiritual level we are and have the glory than rise to positions of greatness and fame without the glory. The worship team got it on the spot this night. I need you. Nothing. No place. That must be your decision. And that's the last prayer point tonight. You're going to say, Lord, truly. There are other things that have taken your place, but this night, I take you back to your position. There is nothing I cannot give you. Some of you need to think well before praying that prayer because there are things you cannot give him. Now say, Lord, finally I lay it down. Lift up your voice. Anything that represents Isaac in your life, your fame, your reputation, is calling you tonight. Come on, pray. You are not yet a Christian. You can lay it down. Say, Lord, there is nothing I cannot give you. I've always been joking, but I mean it tonight. You mean all to me. I need you. I can give you my fame. My anointing can go. Marriage can go. Money can go. Nothing. Mean it from your heart. And no place. Take your place. That should be your prayer tonight. Ladies, pray. You especially. Take your place, oh God. What has taken your place in my life tonight? Take it back, oh God. What has taken your place? Take it back tonight. What has taken the fire? 
Lord, take it back. For many of us, our lives are ikabod. The glory departed. When you began to chase after things, chase after money, chase after people. For many of us, the testimony of our lives are ikabod. No more fire. No more prayer life. Your personal altar is dry. Your word life is dry. Your appetite for the things of the spirit. Tonight, let there be a reignition. Fresh fire for his presence. You used to read books. You love God. You spent your money buying books. When did you start concentrating on clothes beyond the things that brought you glory? Come on, pray tonight. The Lord is taking his place. The Lord is taking his place. Some of you will literally feel like fire on your chest. Literal fire. Take your place tonight, oh God. Dethrone every idol that has stolen our prayer lives. Stolen our word life. Stolen the grace to walk in obedience. Restore us to the place of fire. The place of passion. Your conversation used to be everything of the spirit. But right now, all you concentrate on is carnal things that have no eternal value whatsoever. Cry tonight and say restoration, oh God. This is a solemn assembly tonight. God is preparing us for the miracle service and for our lives. You are alone with God. In the next two minutes, cry to God alone. Forget that you came for Koinonia tonight. Cry and say your glory. Lord, there's no pretending it again. I'm crying. Don't let my fire go cold. Don't let my love for you go cold. Quit chasing titles. Quit chasing ministry. Quit chasing anointing. Pray. Exalt him above every devilish association exalt him above every church and every ministry for some of you your idol is church your idol is ministry you rather disobey God and obey your pastor and obey church said thou shall have no other gods above me Tonight is calling us higher. He that beareth fruit, my father will prove. Pray just one minute and we'll round up. Come go with me behind the veil. Come go with me behind the veil. Come go with me behind the veil. Come go with me. There is a higher realm than where you are standing. Come up here, the spirit is calling to you. Come go with me beyond the realm you are seeing. You have encompassed this mountain long enough.
there is life everlasting. I'm going to make an altar call right now. There are some of you who need to run, not walk. Hallelujah. You've once given your heart to the Lord, but honestly, you know tonight in this family of faith that you need to begin a fresh job. Or you've never made a decision for Jesus. Someone even invited you tonight. I'm just going to count three. I want you to leave your seat and come out here quickly. I want to agree with you and pray with you that you start a new experience. One. Quickly. If you're thinking about it, just remain on your seat. Two. This is my desire to honor you. As you stand here, just be praying. Don't look at me. Lord, we don't my heart is just you and God alone. Forget about who is with you. I worship you. You're talking to your king and your maker. All I have within me. Tonight is time to address those ways. I give you praise. I talk about All that. I adore is in you. Those of you in front here, yeah, I like you to cry out your heart to him. Hey, hey, hey. Lord, I give you. It's not a special number. Even my soul. Like the deer pants after the water. I keep on waiting for you, my Lord. now therefore no condemnation tonight I want you to begin a journey even if you are a pastor just forget about it for now let's begin a journey talk to the Lord in one minute those in front talk to the Lord if you think there's nothing to say go back to your seat but if you have something to say talk to the Lord say Lord I open my heart Enough of church. My sister, that guy that always comes around to sleep with you, send him a text this night. Bye bye. Go for good. I bless you. May you find the love of God. Those of you in front here, I'd like you to lift your hands as high as you can lift it so that you will not forget. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.